Hey adventurers, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Now I saw your votes and I actually forgot to add Wildermyth to the poll. But don't worry, I'll be getting to Grounded soon and probably all those other games too. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't trust ratings and reviews, whether it's video games, board games, or like movies. So when I saw that Wildermyth had an overwhelmingly positive reviews, I didn't believe it. How can a pop-up book art style D&D game be good? Why haven't I heard of it? And why does only one Steam friend have it? Can it really be that good? The answer is yes. In today's video, I'm going to start up a new party and show you how this game plays and maybe you'll get it. Let's get started. Okay, so I won't bore you too much. We're going to start a new story. Uh, you pick the type of game you want to play, whether it's kind of like a, an actual story or like certain defined length of times. Uh, you'll be able to pick your party. You can t have it totally randomized or you can totally customize it, very much like your own D&D &D campaign. Uh, I spent a lot of time. I'm not going to bore you with it, but you can customize your guys quite, quite well. Basically, you can pick a warrior, a hunter, and a mystic right off the bat. Uh, those are the three classes. You do have to have one of each at the very beginning, but as you pick up characters, you will be able to uh, pick what type of class they start off as. So I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to have myself, my friend Hunter, and my friend Fork Emphasis will be the three starting players, and we're going to jump straight into the game once I've uh, spent a lot, actually a lot of time customizing the looks and um, colors and all that kind of stuff on our characters. So, this book, there's room for it. There's room in it for another story. It's cold. I'm stuck here. Wildermyth, the book. Writing out your worries always helps. Right, then this must be the beginning. Here in our yonderling country, something in the woods is very strange. Startled only by the rustles of birds among the thorns, a young man named Knight took the seasonal road to the road or to the town of Taurius Bridge. Everyone's life is their own private legend. Mine's just a lot more honest than the others. Sure, the tale of Knight wouldn't take you half a whiskey. Ordinary beginnings? I bet it ends in some miserable malt house. All right. No more useless thoughts. Morning's getting late, and I still have to drag Hunter out his door. I'm sure he's got some grand plan to see glory somewhere. Let's... we'll have to talk him down. Smoke? Smoke! Because I'm rushing to the smoke. So I get to choose, kind of like any D&D game, you get to choose your actions. So do I have a rivalry with uh, Hunter, a friendship, or a romance? Uh, I'm going to choose... Uh, friend, friendship. So Hunter must have tried to cook breakfast again. Hunter, you alright? I'll get you out. Just make a little noise. So it tells us in the top left of the screen what we have to do. We have to put out fires. Uh, in combat, you have the green area, which means that you'll use up, kind of like XCOM, you either get a move and an action or a double move, but no action. So the green means I can do a move and an action, so I'll move next adjacent to the fire and I'll get an option to extinguish it. And that's what the game wants you to do. It's, it's, this is just a tutorial combat. So we put out that fire, we go again. Usually it's your whole team gets to move, then an enemy, but there's no enemies right now. So it just goes to my, my turn. So teaching you just how to interact with stuff. We put out both fires and we'll move all the way to the door. Okay, and we'll open the door. Well, his home looks fine. Hunter, fire out here. You're not sleeping, are you? Is that night? Coming. I hope your heart is clear and your hands are ready. You hope my what? No time now. These things came. I'm not sure what they were. Caused chaos. This one's behind the house. Won't leave. Grab something and hit it. Garoo! So it looks like some sort of deer-like thing. Oh. Okay, so do I choose to fork him to fight with a pickaxe or a, uh, what's it called, a frying pan? 
I'm gonna pick a uh, pickaxe. We can beat this the thing, right? Or we can't. We'll find out once we open the door. Be ready. So whenever you start combat, it's gonna show you what enemies you're gonna face off against. In this case, it's a what's called a row. It's kind of like a uh, mutated uh, deer. So <coughs> there we go. I am going to actually move up forward. There we go. And now Hunter's turn. I'll just have him uh, go here, which is fine. You'll notice that there's this symbol right here, this shield, blue shield at the bottom of our feet. When you're adjacent to an ally, you uh, uh, do walling, which means you're in a defensive formation, meaning that you take one less damage uh, from enemies. So I like that, we're done. Now, you'll notice at the bottom of abilities, it either has a, it, it'll have a diamond, either an empty diamond uh, or a uh, filled diamond or a red diamond. Uh, meaning that either it's a free action, it's an, it, it'll take up one action, or it'll take up the, your entire action. So let's see, with Knight, we're gonna open the door for a free action. As you can see, swift action is a free action. So we'll do R. We open the door. And uh, let's move here, and the uh, the deer is revealed. And I don't have to do all my action with one character, so I'm actually going to bring Hunter out, and we're going to shoot. And just like XCOM, depending on the range and lots of different factors, your accuracy, your weapon, uh, there's a certain percentage chance to hit. So there's 85% chance to hit. It has no armor. It has four health, and uh, 20%. If you can read it, it says 20% stunt. That is a 20% chance to do a critical, and but it's not just extra damage. Sometimes stunts will do special things, but right now I believe it's just more damage. So let's let's attack. So we hit it, and uh, I think Eric's uh, Hunter's done. And now it's my turn. I'm just gonna wait, and now it's the enemy's turn. And he's gonna come. He'll, tr he'll, he'll attack me. He did three damage, and then I'll just finish it off. Okay. <coughs> So that's the first combat. At the end of each combat, you get some experience. Once you level up, your your stats will improve just like D&D, &D, and uh, you'll get to pick some perks. So Knight is now a Greenhorn Warrior. Warriors like Knights are built hardy, enduring, with a natural aptitude for battle. They develop powerful techniques for close combat. So now I get to choose uh, a, a new passive or a perk. So. Vigilance, Knight's heightened senses allow him to perform up to two reaction strikes per turn. I like that. Uh, untouchable. When Knight gets a kill, the next action against him within one turn will miss. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. So I can like run in, kill something, and the next attack will miss. That's good if there's one other guy near me, but if there's a lot of enemies, that might not be good. Or Paladin. If Knight ends his turn by moving, he'll automatically enter Guardian. I think I'm going to pick Vigilance, because I'm going to be a big tanky guy. But the type of person that I am, I I'm like, I would use a two-handed weapon, so maybe Untouchable might be better. We're going to go Vigilance with, with, with this. Hunter is a Greenhorn Warrior, or Hunter. Hunters, like Hunter, thrives in the wild, s s uh, surviving through stealth and peerless archery. They master their surroundings and bring down large quarry. So we get to choose Archery, Hunter counters all ranged attacks against him, or in any adjacent allies. That's really good, I like that. Um, flash Cone. Once per combat, Hunter throws a Flash Cone that blinds enemies. Um, ooh, that's pretty cool. Crippling Strike. Hunter applies one hobble to an enemy. Ooh, I like that. I think we're going to go Archery, because my Vigilance and his Archery will be perfect. He'll protect me from any ranged attacks, and I'll protect him with my Guardian. That's great. Uh, sometimes after battle or certain things, you'll gain items, which is, in this case, a Bear Strength Cloak. Uh, in this case, it'll give us bonus damage. Um, unlike other games, other fantasy games or D&D, you can't s trade items with each other. So if I select the Bear Strength Cloak, I can't give it to Hunter if I pick up a better one. So once you get it, that's it, and if you replace it, you don't like salvage it or anything like that. It's just, it just gone. You just drop it on the ground. Um, we could also choose to salvage it, like I said. And if you salvage something, you get uh, resources. These resources, at the end of a chapter, 
uh, allows you to craft new weapons and armor, making you stronger. Uh, a chapter is kind of like a story, so we have the story that we're going to follow, and um, uh, yeah, to, 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 once you finish the chapter, things happen, the, the story will progress. So bonus damage, who do we want to give bonus damage to? We'll give it to, oh boy, you're doing no damage. Okay, so we'll give it to Hunter then. So, and, and if you look at his character, it, it, it shows what he'll look like. So I think Eric's primary, or Hunter's primary um, color was blue, so his cloak would be blue, which is pretty cool. I, I, I really like how it visually changes. You're a natural knight. You and I work well together. We should go. Fork is alone. It's quite possible he needs our help. Now, up at that shadowy ruin, what about the village? The fire's out, the thing is dead, the other townsfolk will do what needs doing, and I'm pretty troubled, really. Why was Fork so intent on meeting us there? That old black tower? Even if you don't want to, come with me. Now that you mention it, the tracks do lead that way. Oh, Fork, always trying to make things better. Is there something you weren't saying? So, does Hunter have a rivalry? Friendship or romance with Fork? Let's go with rivalry. This is madness. <coughs> you don't exactly get along with Fork these days. Why? You know what it is? While we clean up his mess, I bet that guy's up there now without a care in the world. But... Okay. So, we need to go to this place. So we're going to scout out the area. We can select who we want to go. We're going to select the whole party. We'll go from Torius Bridge to this Hammerfield area to find Fork. The previous night, the tower where Fork had chosen to meet was a place he often used to escape as a boy. He knows its rooms and floors so well. He could survive being chased through them, but they were a bit dusty. And now I wait, I suppose. Better have a plan if that beast breaks through. Don't you know, beast? I'm not good eating anyways. The tower was a picturesque old ruin, perfect for a plot twist. Now it was little more than a strange nest for owls and tryst lovers. But as the old will tell you, in dusty shadows, shy things long go overlooked. That book, why have I never? Are you wondering why I'm talking to myself, Beast? Also, I'm also wondering. The book felt heavier than its slender spine suggested. It was full of strange stories, the folklore of folk long forgotten. Circles of the Ancients was wild nonsense, how a woodcutter could read the rings inside very old trees, and so find the exact moment a grove began calling itself a forest. The Jester and the Jailer was the farcical tale of a condemned court jester. She convinced her guard that the world inside the cell was freedom, and so the dutiful guardsman released her. The, the Taurus Bridge Girl gave an account of a young woman who drew things so much and so well that they began to come true and she drew circles and circles in a book and eventually fell through. Fork reached the last word of the final tall tale. A few blank pages were left. This book. There's room in for another story. It's cold. I'm stuck here. Right then this must be the beginning. Here in our yondering country, F Fork wrote, not sure why, but finding words ready. Omens had taken shape in the fabric of the land. There's there inside the weird turning hearts that thrummed in things. Something in the woods is very strange. Some were just misgivings. They crept through his body like the sourceless aches one wakes with. Others were more substantial. Now they seemed a thundering promise of doom from the shadowy fringes of the lands we claim as our own. To the huddled homes good families have grown up in, fears begun to pool and fester, drowning good sense. In the wild black woods where birds once belled and hateful silence 
churns. So we got like a mind flare. A sudden startling pain lit Fork's head. Probably woke up from a uh, from with a hangover. It subsided. For a moment, he felt very blank. The stories he'd written lay before him in luminous script, and more empty pages seemed to have sprouted up behind it. Why do I feel powerful? So, fork, what are you going to choose? A spoon or a staff? It's fork and spoon. We're going to do that. Open wide. Okay, mission time. So, as you can see, we're facing off against a mutated boar. And this game, or this, this match is going to show us how mages fight. It's not the typical casting fireballs, lightnings. You're actually doing this thing called interfusing, uh, as you can see from the queue. And that means you, t you um, mingle with the life energy of the item, and each item has their own special attack. So let's open the door, and there's the revealed enemy. Let's see, can I interfuse with anything? I want to interfuse with these books. And as you can see, if I interfuse with it, I get this, I'll be able to use Barrage. It has a two range, which will be in range, and I'll do three damage to the enemy. So let's do that. <coughs> okay, and as you can see now in my two slot, I have a, a damage uh, ability. So I'll press two and I'll attack the boar. But the boar dodged. And now those books are all used up which kind of sucks. So let's move forward. Uh, let's see. And uh, let's see. Let's see if I can interfuse with something else. Maybe the candles? And let's see if I can steal fire. I can't steal it. Hmm, that sucks. Okay. So I interfused with that. And now I'm gonna do fire leash. So I can use this fire and I can't put it over here for some reason. Okay, that sucks. Let's uh, let's do um, let's interfuse with this cabinet. The cabinet has splinter blast, and this time it has um, what's it called? Pierce of two. So hopefully, there. So piercing is important because it's gonna, or actually as shredding, is gonna shred the the two armor in the bottom right that the. Uh, um, that the boar has, meaning that it has damage reduction. Now it doesn't. Normally, the boar would be able to get to us to attack, but this is just a tutorial to teach you how interfusing works. So I'm going to interfuse with these buckets, and I'm going to use Splinter Blast again, dealing two damage. And normally the boar would move, but he can't. We'll interact with the book stand, and we'll Splinter Blast him. And we'll do it one more time. I believe that'll be enough to kill him. We'll do it on a chest. He has the ability Constrict, which has a range of 6, does 3 magic damage, and would hobble the enemy. And we're done. And Fork was by himself, so he gets the experience just for himself. As Fork is now a Greenhorn Mystic. As a mystic, Fork has acquired the knack for interfusing his spirit with earthly things, drawing on these bonds to enact formidable magics. So do we want humanist, myth weaver, or compulsion? Uh, let's take a look. Humanist, advanced interfusions based on human artifice, instruments, and accidents. I like that. Uh, myth weaver, let's see. <coughs> Interfused garb has a chance to reflect damage. Nope. Compulsion. Fork briefly interfuses with an enemy and forces it to move where he pleases. I like that because sometimes you can move him into uh, like fires or stuff like that. But I think we're going to go humanist. Try that out. And we have a belt of divinity, warding. And that is blocking, just like how shields will block physical attacks, warding blocks uh, magical attacks. So we're going to equip it. And uh, you'll see that he, he kind of has this beltish thing now. Did I just do that? I did. I felt the, you know, the something. And? And does this power mean I can really be of use? Fork, I see you're still kicking. Hunter, surprise you show up. 
Knight, glad you made it too. You see that smoke? That's from Torius Bridge. Yeah, that's Torius Bridge. It's burning. How? Garu! <laughs> I've been a little busy myself, actually. Would you two mind terribly if we... I'm not so sure if you've ever seen a... A monster? Sure we have. We slay monsters. Hmm. <laughs> well, I cast spells, so... Okay. So, uh, I'm actually going to end the video right here. Now, before I do that, uh, I will be doing a lot of videos of Wildermiss because I really love this game. Um, before we end it, though, I will be picking up, I believe, a new character very soon. Uh, so, the first two people to um, comment in this video, uh, leave your uh, a character name that you'd like. Preferably something that's acceptable. I won't accept anything that's rude or, you know, um, inappropriate. Uh, I want your name, the class you want, and uh, if you want to tell me about hairstyle, hair color, favorite colors, and class. Make sure you tell me what class you want to be. Uh, whether it's warrior, hunter, or mystic. And uh, I'll put you in, in my game for probably next video, because the next video we're going to pick up, I believe, one or two new characters. But thanks for joining me today. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.